Now, Public Protector Advocate Buzisiwe Mkabane is officially out of office after a parliamentary vote uh, saw her become the first person in her role to be removed. Her almost seven years in office have been somewhat of a wild ride, if I may put it that way. But now tonight on Soweto Today, we are joined by Abuzizu Mkabani herself as we look at some of her most memorable moments in the Public Protector's Office and in her law career. Bahai Tudumela, good evening. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Without wasting any time, she is, is uh, joining us via Zoom now, uh, you know, just to give us a sense of uh, her journey as a public protector there. May Mkwebani, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening, welcome to the show. Good evening and good evening to your listeners. Thank you for inviting me. Much appreciated. You know, before we get into, you know, just your journey in the office, I want us to start by getting to know who is Busisu M. Kweban, you know, outside her career as an advocate. Uh, you know, uh, we know that uh, people know you as a person who's well vested when it comes to the law. But who is the person behind this name, Busisu M. Kweban? Okay, um, I was born in Bethal in Pumalanga, and um, my family then moved to uh, Hamaskral, then Guandebele. So I grew up um, in Guandebele, spent more than 45 years there. I studied my primary high school, my um, um, uh, high school, and then I moved to do my LLB, my BPROC and LLB. University of uh, the North. Now it's called University of Limpopo. And uh, from there, I worked as a prosecutor since 1994. And in Guandebele, I moved then to the Department of Justice to work as the legal administration officer and uh, focusing on uh, extradition law and uh, um, international law. And then I moved to the Human Rights Commission to be uh, working there. I was working as a senior researcher. Then I moved to the public protector. I worked uh, public protector for six years uh, before I moved to the Department of Home Affairs as the uh, director then uh, Refugee Affairs. So I worked uh, Home Affairs for more than 20 years before I was deployed um, by the Department of Home Affairs uh, to work as the um, uh, uh, counselor immigration. Mm. I spent four years there, and uh, then I came back to South Africa in 2014, and um, then I went back to home affairs. Mm. Uh -huh. And uh, I worked there um, until... I then uh, uh, got a job, a state security agency, which is also one of the departments and a constitutional institution. I worked there for three months before then I was appointed as the fourth public protector of South Africa. Mm. Um, I, I mean, speaking of for the appointment, I know that you were up against, uh, you know, 13 candidates there for the job back in 2016. And also, you know, you actually uh, beat one of the judges who was also being interviewed there. Let's talk about what motivated you uh, just to, you know, get into that office or just following law in general. Um, I would say um, it was two judges. It was just, just uh, uh, in fact, yeah, it's two judges, not one. Uh, uh, but what I would say is that I was nominated by one of the former uh, employees of Home Affairs who was reporting to me, who approached me to agree to the nomination. And I indeed, I agreed. And um, what motivated me as well was that I dealt with uh, human rights related matters for a long period of time because I worked as a prosecutor and uh, from there I then focused more on human rights and also working for a long time in home affairs and also the issue of humanitarian law, especially refugee law and uh, helping people. So. I then took it that actually uh, I have a lot of experience in the field and I would be able to be of assistance and I would be able to be protecting the public. Mm. 
So, so the judges is hmm. judge is judge Desai and judge um, Justice uh, Vena. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the role of the office itself, maybe if you can just unpack it for us, uh, just to understand the role and responsibilities of the public protector, because, you know, a lot of South Africans, they just know that there is a Chapter 9 institution called the public protector, but normally they don't know what actually does the office do. The office of the public protector is a constitutional institution, so it's provided for in the constitution, is not a department, is not a state-owned institution, but a, a, a constitutional institution. You have the Public Protector, Human Rights Commission, uh, Auditor General, Gender Commission, CRL. Um, so those institutions, and ICASA. And so the Public Protector, in terms of the Constitution, investigates uh, improper conduct by um, a, a, a state functionaries, and maladministration. Then there's a Public Protector Act which deals with what maladministration is all about, where you delay to receive any service from government, uh, whether municipality, nation, provincial government, national government, state-owned uh, institutions, public uh, universities. So the Public Protector has jurisdiction. If public servants are asking for bribes, all this corruption, so the public protector investigates those. But the public protector has no mandate to investigate private companies unless it involves state money. And the public protector can't investigate court judgments, but can investigate the behavior and the conduct of uh, court officials. So that's the mandate of the public protector. And one of the other mandate which the public protector has which a lot of ombudsmen or public protectors around the world do not have, is to investigate the president, the ministers, and uh, the MECs and premiers. So that's the mandate which the public protector has, especially on their ethical conduct. So the public protector has a, a jurisdiction to investigate those. Bujisium Kweban is our guest uh, tonight. Uh, I want us to take a quick breather. We will continue with the former public protector of South Africa just after the ad break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. If you just tuned in uh, tonight, we are reflecting on the career of former public protector of South Africa, Advocate Bujisium Kwebani in the law field. She's joining us uh, by Zoom there. Ma'am Kwabani, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, uh, I want us to look at your turner, you know, from October 2016. Uh, what would you say, uh, you know, you have done for the public and as regulated by the national, uh, you know, legislation? Um, as the public protector, I there is a lot which we have done with the public protector team. Since I started in 2016 October, we've managed to uh, finalize more than uh, 60,000 complaints uh, where we were helping people on bread and butter issues. I mean, especially where you delay to receive your ID, your UIF, your, you are injured uh, at work and the employer is delaying to pay issues related, relating to uh, access to service delivery issues like water, electricity and those. So as public protector also with the team, we've managed to uh, acquire three clean audits. Um, first time in the history of this institution, to receive a clean audit um, when we were celebrating 25 years as an institution or as a constitutional institution. Um, under my leadership, we've helped the communities of uh, Masipumelele in Western Cape, who were staying in, uh, um, uh, in, in, in uh, the, uh, well, it, it's a very, it's a squatter camps, where I can say that, which were filthy, not being cleaned. I mean, it was not habitable. Um, we helped communities of Ikemeling, uh, they were staying in makeshift tents where we helped them to be moved and the um, uh, uh, Department of uh, Human Settlement built houses for them. And we helped communities of Limpopo, uh, mm -hmm. Northwest, um, to access water, uh, you know, uh, pensioners to receive their pensions on time. So 
that's what I would say. And um, as the pipe protector, we've managed to also open a lot of offices, uh, expand the, the, the footprint of the office, uh, because that's what I said I will focus on. And this vision 2023, which I developed with the team, and we've achieved that because it includes accessibility to the office, uh, working with magistrates' offices uh, so that there can be drop boxes where people can lodge their complaints with the traditional leaders and all those. So, and also one of the biggest achievement was to um, uh, have e, e, e app where uh, each house, when you have an Android phone, you can download the app. You can understand what are your rights, where can you complain. And as a public protector, also we encourage state institutions to have complaints offices so that people will be assisted speedily. But as an institution, we focus more on systemic challenges. So those are the achievements of the public protector. Mm. I, I just want to shift gears a bit. Um, I mean, I want to look at uh, some of the investigations that you have done. I mean, one of which uh, dates back uh, to 2017. I mean, your investigation into President Cyril Ramaphosa's CR17 campaign, which was then accused to be faulty. But you said that, uh, you know, you uh, do not agree with the conclusion reached by the uh, court there. Uh, do you then think that uh, if a different court had handled the matter, then a different conclusion would have come out uh, when it comes to the issue of the CR-17 documents? I, I must say, um, uh, Tanyani um, and your listeners, unfortunately, media and everyone is focusing on all, only those few cases where we were investigating the president, the ministers, uh, the accused, that one is political and all those, whereas the investigation is done by the investigators in the office. So that investigation was done under this law, uh, the Executive Members Ethics Act. And uh, I must say, that was conducted by a very experienced chief investigator who acquired all the evidence. We had all bank statements and everything. And I must say that uh, actually the very same constitutional court they never agreed. Remember, there was a minority judgment of Chief Justice Mukwe Mukwe, who was also very much concerned to say the president is saying he doesn't know about the, or the donors and all those, but um, he's having, a, we had proof of emails where he was sending emails where money must be sent and he was hosting those dinners where he was hosting the donors. So Mohuen was also very, very, uh, 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 you know, uh, harsh uh, in saying, but the president is concerned about how did we receive the email instead of, um, uh, you know, acknowledging that that was wrong. And remember, we were investigating him as the deputy president who was supposed to declare all those uh, particular donations. So I must indicate that uh, the judgment of Mukweng Mukweng, that minority judgment, it's what I agree with. And it's what we have done as an institution in investigating the matter. Just before we go to the ad break, you know, I just want to bring this issue of the Palapala scandal uh, into the fray. I mean, um, some analysts are saying that uh, you are actually, uh, you faced impeachment because of that investigation. That's where things started turning. Um, do you think that, uh, you know, when you started uh, probing and then just uh, giving a report on uh, what transpired there at that game farm uh, with the issue of the foreign currency being found there uh, resulted in the current situation that you find yourself in currently? Definitely. I mean, I was suspended for sending those 30, 31 questions um, relating to the Palapala investigation. And remember, these complaints are brought by members of parliament. I mean, for, for instance, Busasa was lodged by the very same DA, which is uh, uh, the motion of the DA for my removal. The Palapala was lodged by the African Transformation Movement, the ATM, and, uh, and FF Plus and others. And uh, when we investigate, we give a person an opportunity um, I prepared those questions. We prepared actually with the team, uh, the senior investig a chief investigator for that matter as well, to prepare the questions we sent them. And I also announced that, um, yes, we've received a complaint. We are investigating. And under the Executive Members Ethics Act, it compels one to investigate. I don't have a discretion not to investigate. 
And indeed, uh, when I announced that, indeed, I've been receiving a lot of media inquiries about the investigation, and I confirmed that we are investigating. We've sent the questions. Boom, the following day, I was suspended. And the president couldn't even wait for the court judgment of the Western Cape because I was challenging or interdicting the suspension. Remember, he issued me with a letter uh, asking me to indicate why he must not suspend me. So indeed, I was suspended for Palapala Pala, um, investigation. I want us to take a quick breather. We conclude the conversation with uh, the former public protector, Mr. Suem Kobane, right after the air break to not move. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show and we're still joined uh, via Zoom. That's uh, former public protector, Mr. Suem Kwebani, as we look at her almost seven years uh, turner as a uh, public protector and what it came with as well as just getting to know her better. She's still with us uh, this evening. Mem Kwebani, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, uh, you know, I, I want to pose this question to you. Um, previously, you know, the media uh, analysts have labeled you as uh, uh, being part of, uh, you know, certain factions within the political space saying that, look, you are, when you entered the office, you were protecting a certain faction that belonged to the likes of uh, former President Jacob Zuma, uh, you know, which you were against uh, the uh, faction that uh, belongs to the current president, um, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa there. And some have said to you that, uh, I mean, have quoted saying that, uh, look, uh, the public protector is somewhat controversial. Do you think that, uh, you know, they misunderstood you as uh, a public protector? You know, uh, unfortunately in South Africa, the media is uh, our challenge and uh, our downfall as, as a country because this institution, uh, which is a gift, it's a biblical, in fact, a gift uh, which Mukwen Mukwen said to the public. And now they just focus on the incumbent, they attack me, and they, uh, they were not working with us to protect the public. 95 to 98% of our work, I mean, is bread and butter issues. To protect the public, they should be publishing those, holding the public servants to account. I was never at all a, 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 a factional public protector. I operated in the, a, a, a very a political space because of this Executive Members Ethics Act, which I'm saying that act was meaning that we should investigate politicians, especially the president, the ministers, and uh, the emissaries and the premiers. So that's what uh, led to these uh, accusations. So the issue of um, uh, 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 that I never, uh, I was a, a Zuma person, or Zuta or Gupta, those were lies. There was never a, a case which was lost where I had to investigate Zuma and I, I didn't investigate him. And if they mean other than the so-called factions or the RET factions which they were saying are there, I investigated those matters and there were findings against Abom Seven Zizwanabo, Van Royen, Abo Kika, Abo, Lynn Brown, and also the so-called faction of the president, Abo Gordon, uh, the president and others, and even Premier Helen Zille, your DA people, and Abu Winde. And what's worse as well, there were cases where I exonerated the very same Abu Kodan and the other factions. So the factions, I'm not a part of those. And I mean, if Uzuma, they are saying I was favoring him, there was never a complaint which I investigated. Madonzela is the one who investigated that matter and issued a report against uh, 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 Uzuma and uh, the two reports. So unfortunately, um, I've said a lot and I explained myself. It's for the public, for them to uh, then uh, go ahead and believe whatever the media tells them. But for me, history has no blank pages. I dealt with the matters. And uh, unfortunately, if I'm functional, then it means the very same senior investigators, the chief investigators, the provinces where the complaints are lodged, it means they are also functional. How can I pressure them and say, this is how you do things and write reports? That was not the case. Mm. Can you confidently say that, uh, you know, you've served 
the country properly uh, in your tenure in office? Definitely. I mean, I said to you, the first time this institution received a clean audit 25 years into its existence, and three of them clean audits, and it's not only clean audits, we improved performance, exceptionally improved performance. And as I said to you, completing almost 98% of our work where we were helping the public. And um, I would say I'm proud about that. And I think given another opportunity, I will still serve the public. I will still have that ethical commitment to serve the public because that institution holds the executive and the public servants who are delayed to process people's uh, service delivery issues. So I will still do that. And um, we've managed to do that with the team. Actually, I wanted to ask you this question earlier on. I mean, um, I wanted to know what was your take on how the impeachment process, you know, was, uh, uh, it, it, it went uh, in speed. Uh, because, I mean, you your term of office ends next month, at the end of next month. But, uh, you know, um, a lot of analysts are saying that the, somewhere, somehow, this process was rushed. They could have just let you finish your term peacefully. What's your take on how this info, uh, unfolded? Indeed, I mean, I was laughing that, you know, the president was so quick to even sign the removal letter. I mean, if we had the president and all those members of parliament so efficient, we would be far as a country. We wouldn't have load shedding, uh, mass health system, mass education system, and uh, uh, unemployment and everything. Indeed, it was not a fair process, hence I'm taking it on review. I never completed my testimony. And I mean, out of all the 60,000 complaints, I mean, it's only five matters which um, were before the judges, where they found against me, and I testified on two, there are three I couldn't, and I've got evidence and different facts to show that, uh, you know, this is how we did our work. We're still the very same committee which the chairperson is accused of bribery and extortion uh, against my husband. We've got the recordings when one member of the committee is confirming that. We've got Dabo Mazon, whose husband um, was part of that, and the complainant. So it was riddled with the number of unfairness, and mm. um, they wanted to get rid of me. I mean, if the ANC, first time in its history since 1912, adopting and voting um, the, 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 the motion of the opposition party. So it means they were hell bent to deal with me. Just, um, you know, in brief, uh, because we've ran out of time, what is next for Advocate Busisuem Kwebane? I mean, I saw some of your pictures there uh, doing farming there. And people, I mean, are opening political parties. Others are probably going back to uh, the law field and stuff. What is next for you? You know, I said before that I, now I'm a free agent. Uh, people, uh, but then yes, um, I think uh, the issue of also making sure that each and every household and family, we could find ways of producing our own food because, um, you know, with poverty and the challenges of what we are facing now. Indeed, I'm busy with that. Um, uh, also, we'll be having a very important event on uh, on the 30th of September, where I'm calling upon black excellence. I mean, uh, we have our advocate uh, Skakane, advocate Mbofu, uh, Professor Paking, um, you know, who will be telling us the good stories, uh, Brian Mulife, because I'm worried that, unfortunately, we have... Uh, uh, mentors and uh, people who people are looking up to to us and we've done our best so I would want us to leave a legacy and create our own history tell our own stories on what we've done to improve the lives of the poor and the marginalized and um, I wouldn't open a political party because unfortunately that's a divide and rule issue and uh, I think blacks um, and especially the people who would want uh, to uh, uh, assist in elevating
the, 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 the lives of the poor and the marginalized. So I think I would be joining others so that we can uplift the poor. Mem Kobani, thanks very much. That's Advocate Tivosisu Mem Kobani, much appreciated for coming this evening, just talking to us through her almost seven year long turner as the person responsible for maintaining and defending democracy and its citizens, as well as helping us uh, to know her better outside her scope of work. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Now, alternatively, you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself and the rest of the team, Mas Chaba Kobola is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching.